Well, I can tell you, Max, it was certainly an earthquake that was felt all over central Italy. I felt it here in Rome. Uh, it hit in the middle of the night, and it was a big one. Uh, it lasted uh, several minutes and, and really shook uh, all of the buildings. Even people here in Rome went out into the streets and, uh, and were, were very afraid as to what was going to happen afterwards. There didn't seem to be too many aftershocks, frankly, but the big one that hit was enough. And, of course, in the epicenter in Aquila, which is uh, north of Rome, kind of right in the center of Italy, as it were, uh, there's, there's much damage because it's an old medieval uh, area. The buildings are, are ancient and some of them crumbling. And so, as you can imagine, the authorities are trying to ascertain at this moment exactly what the damage is. It, it happened in the middle of the night, so we're now early in the early hours of the morning trying to, uh, to figure out exactly what the number of casualties are and what is the damage to a lot of those buildings. Because, of course, the problem in Italy is that you've got very old buildings that are always... Uh, trying to be maintained and so when you get an earthquake like this which does happen quite a lot in in central italy frankly because they're on fault lines there there are two fault lines that run through uh all through italy uh you you always have quite a bit of of uh damage in these situations and especially for an earthquake of this of this magnitude yeah, Delia, just watching the, the latest images uh, we've got coming through to us, it's obviously still dark there. Daylight is about to uh, happen, as it were, so we'll get a proper sense of the damage. But certainly just these pictures, pictures that are darkened, Italy, uh, look bad enough. But like you say, it's a very old city, isn't it? So uh, the foundations aren't particularly strong. So the concern is that more homes would be damaged there than they would in more modern parts of Italy. Well, exactly, because in more modern buildings now, of course, they're very careful to build uh, according to certain standards. Uh, I can tell you even my own building, which is fairly modern, but it rocked back and forth like a boat. Uh, so in some of these more ancient towns, uh, you're going to have a lot of damage um, to to the buildings. And, and many of them, of course, are wonderful historical sites as well. Not to, you know, the, the houses are the most important thing where the people are. And, of course, hospitals and uh, dormitories, etc. We've had Italian television talking about a student dormitory that the roof has collapsed on so um, there are a number of different places where people right now are, are quite worried and um, when a, when an earthquake strikes uh, the, the Italians tend to go out into the street you know I remember in California they tell us to get under something get under a doorway get under a desk but here they tend to go out and uh, and that creates more confusion and more panic and also you have a strange situation of lots of construction sites sometimes in these uh, central Italian areas I remember in 2002 in that terrible earthquake when a school collapsed on, on 26 children and they died. Um, and, and so you have these, these, uh, these sort of building sites because they're constantly rebuilding these areas that, that are very dangerous when you go out into the street then because any of the material from those building sites can just fly off as well. So it becomes a very chaotic situation uh, when, when these earthquakes happen in these small towns. Yeah, Dila, we're just going to go back to those uh, daytime pictures because they've just come in to us and they do give a, a better sense really of the amount of damage uh, in that region of uh, central Italy. Uh, we understand that at least six people are dead, but uh, all the news agencies suggesting that the figure will be much higher, I presume, because you don't really know how many people are dead because uh, under these buildings you're going to uh, unfortunately find more bodies. Unfortunately, that's always the way, Max. In the beginning, uh, the numbers are only those people that they know immediately. This happened at 3.30 in the morning, and uh, we're a few hours from that now. But as you can see with the rubble, uh, it's going to take quite some time to figure out where everybody is and exactly the numbers. And, of course, we're talking about a number of different towns as well. So it's not just in one major city. It's all over in very small towns. A population around the, the epicenter was about 100,000 people. Um, um, but as, as I told you, the, it, this earthquake was felt uh, in a number of places outside of that. So that it will be probably throughout the day. Unfortunately, we'll see an increase in that number. And we were talking about um, uh, preparations for earthquakes in that area. They are pretty much used to earthquakes there. There have been some appalling ones in the past. And uh, someone's suggesting to us that over 100,000 people are out in the streets because, as you say, they want to go out to open areas to avoid the sort of scenes that we've got on the, 
on the, the screens at the moment? Yeah, they're out in the streets and then they're afraid to go back into their houses because in these old houses, you know, they'll, they'll just crack and bits will fall off and, uh, and so it becomes an unsafe situation um, on where to go, frankly, when, uh, when an earthquake strikes. And they have tried, because it is in a, a fault line, they've tried to uh, reinforce a lot of these houses and a lot of these areas. But of course, um, you know, when an earthquake hits, even some of the reinforced ones uh, can't hold in these situations. Okay, Delia Gallagher, thank you very much indeed for joining us from Rome. Joshua Brothers is an American missionary who has been uh, living in Italy for two years. He was asleep when the quake hit, and earlier we spoke to him by phone from the city of L'Aquila. It was just a really big shake. It sounds as if a 747 was actually coming in to land. That's the first thing that passed through my mind. Did you hear anything? Uh, um, just the whole palazzo shaking, and people were yelling they were getting ready to come out of the palazzo. And so we grabbed a few things, stepped on our shoes, and headed out of the Palazzo. The Palazzo is the apartment where we live, um, and everybody was reuniting outside together, family and friends. So did you see lots of, did you see any damage where you were? Understandably, it is very early in the morning at the time when it happened. Were you able to see any, any sort of damage um, or any, any, any injuries at this time? Actually, we did take a walk just down to check on one of the, our friends that we know that lives just down the way. Our palazzo is fine, but if you look along the way, there are many palazzi that are cracked. Walls have fallen in on some of them on the bottom floors. Um, there was actually one person who, there was a woman who had a wall fall in on her. We're not sure of her condition, um, who lived in the palazzo where our friend lives. And are you seeing, um, where, where, where are you walking to right now? You're walking away from your apartment, which is near the city center. Where are you walking to uh -huh. right now? We're actually walking towards the center. There's some other people that we know. We have to go down into a little valley and then come back up. And we're going to be seeing how they are today, see if we can help them and serve. Have you seen um, any of the emergency services? Are they there right now? There are people trying to, uh, uh, I guess, find find any any survivors, any victims of this earthquake. Yes, they are. Most of them are actually in the city center right now. That's where the strongest damages were made because most of the buildings in the city center are more than a hundred years old, and so mm. they have walls that are a lot weaker than the other palazzi that are made of reinforced concrete. And so there were a lot more Wait. damages actually inside the city. That was Joshua Brothers. He's an American missionary who's been living in uh, in Italy for for two years, and he was actually in in uh, L'Aquila, uh, and he spoke to us uh, not too long ago. Just to give you um, uh, an update of what's been happening, what we right know right now, reports are indicating that at least six people uh, have been killed in this uh, earthquake, the 6.3 uh, magnitude earthquake in the uh, uh, city of L'Aquila, which is about 70 miles or 110 kilometers northeast of Rome. It happened around 3:30 a.m. local time. Um, that was just a, a couple of hours ago, just a few hours ago. Uh, we are bringing you as much information as we can at this point, but understandably, because this is just unfolding, uh, the information is just trickling. Some of the images that we're getting right now is just overnight pictures uh, from just a couple of hours ago of, again, cranes, uh, damage, people trying to run to safety. Uh, numerous uh, other bits of information that we're also getting is the mayor of, of L'Aquila saying that at least 100,000 people are having to leave uh, this town. As we heard from Joshua, the uh, the town is a, is a medieval city. There are lots of old buildings. So, um, excuse me. Uh, probably as daylight breaks, as we are seeing now, and we get more pictures from daylight, we will see more damage uh, that has been uh, uh, that is a result of this earthquake. We will bring you the very latest, of course, as soon as we get.